What's up everybody? Welcome to the Phage Views YouTube channel. My name is Jordan and if you are new here, thank you for joining me. And if you're a subscriber, welcome back as always. Today, I have a new sound system to look at and I'm super excited about it. It's from a company that I haven't worked with before, but based on my experience with this sound system, I wanna hear more of what they have to offer. This is the Soundtown Carpo V415 SPW. It's a combination sound system setup that involves a 15 inch powered subwoofer with powered amplifier outputs to go to a pair of column array type speakers. It's all in one contained system. You get a subwoofer, the two tops, a pair of speaker stands and cables for a pretty affordable price. Compared to other speakers on the market, you're getting a lot for your money. And in this video, I'm gonna do a full unboxing and explanation explanation of what comes in the package, explain some of the most important specs of this system, and give you a quick sound demo and tell you about my experience using the system over the past little while. Now, if you're new here, uh, I'm glad you're here. Consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me grow, helps me continue to bring you awesome product reviews. And if there's a question that you have about this Soundtown system, go ahead and leave it down in the description. I'll try and answer it as quick as I can. But enough about that. Let's dive into taking a look at the Soundtown Carpo V415 SPW. Now, this system is one of many different configurations that Soundtown sells of this Carpo series. They have a 15 and an 18 inch sub option and white and in black. So if you're doing more elegant wedding type events, you can get it in the white colorway, which looks really nice. I've got the black one here. This is part of it. You'll see the rest in just a moment. But depending on how big of a system you need and what color you're looking for, you can choose between the two. The package that I specifically have, the V415 SPW, comes with the Carpo V4 speakers. It's a four driver curved passive column array type system and we're going to talk about the tops and the subs both independently but first why would you want a system like this well for the money you know you can spend to get this specific combo of sub and tops you could buy a pair of you know 12 inch traditional speakers from one of any manufacturers but the thing with those is you're not going to have much low end in that system any standalone 12 inch top really just can't hit the lowest notes additionally powered speakers you're going to need a power cord and a signal cord for each whereas with this carpo v415 system the subwoofer powers both of the tops so all you need to do is run one power to the sub and then the combo power and signal cable out to each of the tops. It's just one less cable to worry about, a little more easy, maybe for someone that doesn't use a sound system very often, or someone that's looking for max simplicity. Now, before we dive in too deep uh, to looking at the different components, I did wanna talk about what comes in the box. I'll overlay the unboxing video on top of this that I did earlier, just because it was so big, it's kind of a lot to handle, but you've got the subwoofer itself. It's in a very well-protected, double-boxed cardboard package. There's no way this thing is getting beat up. Not that it matters, because it's really well-built. Lots of foam wrapped in plastic use two people to get it out or at least tip it over and uh, pull up the box separately do not try and pull it out of the box itself it's too big for that but along with the subwoofer you're going to get an IEC to power the subwoofer and then you've got the separate box for the columns now the columns themselves I've got one on the stand behind me I've also got this column right here they come wrapped in plastic very well packaged also in the box, you get two nine foot speak ons. This is one of the only drawbacks of this system. I think that the speak ons are a little bit short, especially with the stand. Um, I would have, I would go out and buy 28 foot speak ons at least for yourself. And just, you know, it's not that much money in addition to this. You'll still be out under a thousand bucks for the system. Grab some longer speak ons. These work, no shorts, no issues with them. They feel okay, but it would make the system a lot more versatile. And then, uh, like I said, IEC power cable that comes in the system, and then of course you get your, your user manuals, okay? So uh, not much to the system, you know, just kind of your ins and outs, and I'll show you those a little more close up in just a moment. Now the last thing that comes with the system are the stands. I've got one behind me, and I've got one right here. Now, these are well made, you know, just any other affordable speaker stand would be built just as well. The one thing is that they do not go very high. At the top of the range, the speaker is just about eye level and really you want to have your speakers a little bit above the heads of the crowd so if you're doing a gig like a corporate breakout room where people are seated and they're not going to be like standing in front of the speaker like at a dance these stands are probably fine but that's the only other upgrade i would make to the system i would buy 
bigger speaker stands or Soundtown maybe can, can start including larger speaker stands for a little more money. They're good, they're well built, but I would want them, these are like kind of mini stands as you can see. I would want them to get the speaker up above the head of the crowd. Let's take a look at each of the components individually. So we'll start with the subwoofer. It's the Carpo 15 SPW. It's got a 15 inch speaker cone with a three inch voice coil and it puts out 400 watts RMS of power. And I appreciate them putting an honest spec like that. You know, a lot of companies will inflate that, but saying 400 RMS, that's realistic. And I think that's what the system can offer. On the peak side, it offers 1600 watts peaks, but honestly, wattage doesn't really matter to volume. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, one of the coolest things about this system is that the subwoofer actually has two amps in it. One amp is for driving a pair of passive upper speakers. We're using the Carpo V4s, but you can use other ones as long as they're within the wattage. Now, the amplifier, let me check my specs here. The amplifier for the tops puts out 250 watts of RMS per channel, and it's a Speakon output on the subwoofer. All right, we'll take a closer look at the mixer section in just a moment. A couple more specs that I wanted to point out for the 15 SPW sub. It has a 40 hertz to 300 hertz frequency response range, 98 dB sensitivity with 125 max dB SPL. So I think that, again, is realistic. 125 is well within this price category and what a, a subwoofer of this type can do. And so again, they're not trying to over inflate their numbers, which I really respect. Now the subwoofer is no joke. It comes in at 93 pounds. So it's definitely a hefty boy. You're going to need help lifting it in your car probably and wheeling it around. Although they do have some little wheels on the back of the unit to kind of tip it and move it. Uh, in addition to the weight, it's got a really nice textured coating on the outside. It's made of plywood. So this is a wood subwoofer, 100% birch plywood, they say. And uh, so it just feels really robust, like it's gonna stand up to good use. Going along with the weight of the speaker, the magnet on the driver is 80 ounces. I don't know what that works out to, 16 ounces in a pound, so you can do the math there. But it's a hefty magnet, and really the whole unit just feels extremely sturdy. I love the design of the grill. The whole subwoofer looks very modern, not cheesy at all. On the top of the subwoofer, there's your standard 35 millimeter pull mount socket, so if you wanted, to get two of the subs and put one top on each side. Uh, you could do that easily. So that's the subwoofer, the 15 SPW. Now let's switch over to the tops. I've got a single one right here. I'll bring another one in that's a little close. And my first impressions on this guy were it is heavy when you pull it out of the box. Despite being a plastic enclosure, this thing is super robust. I, whatever magnets they're using in this guy are also quite big. You can see that it's curved and when you use the pull mount socket on the bottom to place it on a pull, it tilts so that the very top driver is just barely pointing above horizontal and it kind of curves down from there which is a really nice design on the back you've got a single speak on input this is a passive speaker you need an amplifier for it and then you've got your tightening screw right here to mount it onto the pole now inside of the speaker you can actually see there's not like a fabric behind the grill there are four four inch drivers and in front of each of the drivers is a uh, one inch compression driver. So there's actually eight drivers in here. The compressions are in front of the other drivers. This guy, like I said, is passive. It has an 80 Hertz to two to 20 kilohertz frequency response. It has 96 dB sensitivity and a max SPL of 120. Again, honesty, I appreciate it. The dispersion on this guy being a, um, a column array type system is you're going to get 90 degrees horizontal and then 45 in the vertical. So a little more narrow in the vertical and uh, you're not wasting energy on the ceiling, especially when you can tilt this forward so that it's really just pointing straight out into the crowd, which I like. Now these speakers can handle 125 watts RMS or 500 watts peak. So perfectly matched with the subwoofer that they include. And uh, like I mentioned, we've got our pole mounting socket on the bottom. Now these themselves are, uh, this says 34 pounds. I think that's for both of them. So you're looking at like 17 pounds a piece. Is that how that math works out? 17 pounds a piece. And you know, like I said, it says lightweight and I think you know compared to like a traditional 12 inch top it's lightweight but again it does not feel like light enough to be concerning it feels very hefty uh, and it looks really nice the design is good being plastic uh, it's still a good coating that's gonna stand up to wear and use so that's some of the specs of this system now I shot a separate segment of the subwoofer so that you can see the back panel all of the ins and outs so we'll cut to that right now all right, so here's the back panel of our subwoofer. There's basically kind of two sections. The left really doesn't have anything besides our ventilation fan, which I'm happy to say is very quiet. I have no concerns about using this uh, in a similar quiet environment. You 
won't hear this at all. On the right side, we've got our ins and our outs and a couple controls. For inputs, we've got our combo quarter inch and XLR inputs, and then we have a through output. This is the full signal strength, so you can link this to another subwoofer or another set of speakers. Below that, we have a few adjustments. Now, keep in mind, this is not really like a mixing section per se. Uh, really, this is meant to receive a signal from a mixer, and so because of that, we've just got separate volumes here for the satellite or the top speaker and the subwoofer, okay? You can adjust those volumes into Independently, I think they sound good when they're together. Now it's worth knowing that as far as volume on this guy, I found that if you put these in the center at Unity, it's actually extremely sensitive and a little too loud. You can hit the clip light pretty easily. So I actually keep them more about the nine o'clock position. And that way I can send a really strong signal for good gain structure and get a really clear, nice signal. Below the volumes for the subwoofer and the satellite, uh, we have the balance, so left and right, if you wanna kinda lean it one way or the other, I just keep that in the middle. And then our low pass filter, so this adjusts where the subwoofer stops reproducing frequencies, all the way from 40 hertz on the left, which really you're not gonna get much output at all, up to 180 hertz on the right. Now, uh, the one, one thing about this system is that you've got 15 inches and then like four inches up in the top. So there's kind of a big gap there. And as such, I usually will put my low pass filter all the way to the right. It means that the, the subwoofer is producing uh, a little higher frequencies than I normally would like, but it helps the system smooth out really well between the sub and the tops. Uh, below those two knobs, we've got a 200 hertz high pass filter, which I do use. This makes sure that the signal going to the top speakers is not getting a lot of that low bass. If you do, those distort a lot easier, so I just turn the high pass filter on so that they're only getting frequencies above 200 hertz. Then we've got a polarity here. This is will change the polarity of the subwoofer. If you've got it set up and for some reason you're just not hearing much bass output, it could be that there's some sort of reflection that's canceling out the signal, so you can flip the polarity over to 180 and that may give you better sub output. Just try both and see what works better. At the bottom, we've got our satellite output. So these are powered Speakon outputs to the top passive speakers. In this case, uh, the ones that came with the system, but you could probably run any other speaker. I think these have 250 watts RMS output. And then we've got our power switch right here and our AC input for the IEC and then a fuse at the bottom. You'll also notice if I tip the camera forward a little bit, we do have a pair of rolling wheels right here, kind of casters. Uh, I wouldn't say as good as maybe like swiveling ones on the corners, but this the fact that they include these, I really like that. It's thoughtful of them to have that in the package. All right, so you've seen the top up close, you've seen the subwoofer, we've talked about specs, ins and outs. Now it's time to give you guys a little bit of the sound test. Now I'll preface this by saying I'm not a big fan of sound tests. By the time they come through the camera, the editing software uploaded and compressed on YouTube, it comes out your headphones. It's not the same as what it actually sounds like, but you guys love them. So we'll do a quick sound test right now. All right, so we've got the system set up right here. Uh, really, we could go maybe a foot farther either way to the side, uh, but really you're gonna want longer speak on cables to do that. I do have my trusty Tascam mixer right here, which is what I use to record all my speaker demos. It's about chest height. And uh, we're just gonna play a variety of different genres, a few seconds of each. We can't do that much more than that because of YouTube copyright, but we'll give you a little bit of test as much as we can. Okay, so there was your sound test. Now let me tell you my kind of experience using this system. The sound is great, much more full than a 12 inch uh, speaker on its own on a pole or even a 15 inch. Having the sub on the ground really makes a difference. Uh, the vocals are extremely clear. The, the mids and the highs are very stand out with this system. I'm, I'm honestly ex extremely impressed. And I think this system would be well suited for a couple very specific scenarios. I think a small band doing bars and coffee houses would love this system. Tons of very, very clear vocal stuff, especially if you're more like an acoustic, an indie, a folk act, I think this is your ticket. Hard rock bands maybe need a little more punch, but you know, other types of, of musicians, this is gonna be a really, really great 
full sounding system. The other thing that I think this system is great for is gonna be corporate work. I went to a conference recently, there were breakout rooms of maybe 100 people, seated in chairs with a speaker giving uh, a lecture. And I think having the sub on the back wall behind the speaker, and then maybe with some 20 foot speak ons out to the sides with this system, you could even use the included speaker stands despite them being short because people are gonna be seated anyway. Plenty of clear vocal output and for music playback, you know, full range output to work for a corporate gig. Um, this system could be used to do small parties, small events. Uh, you just gotta be careful if you're limiting your sub. I'd add a second sub, honestly, if you're gonna go that route, if you know, doing big hard hitting parties, but there's a ton of volume output and, and just again, the clarity was quite impressive. And the fact that you can get going uh, under a thousand bucks out the door with everything you need is great. So that's gonna be it for today. This again is the Carpo V415 SPW combo subwoofer and passive column speaker system. Uh, Compared to what else you can spend the money on, I think it stands up very well. If you're looking for this aesthetic, if you want really clear mid-range and vocals with a full sounding low end, a passive upper system so you only have to use one cable, this offers all of that. And the construction is just out of this world. The fact that you're getting this full birch plywood subwoofer, these hefty big magnet upper uh, column speakers, you can't beat it. So if you wanna grab one of these, I will include a link down below. You can buy through there, support the channel. I would of course love you for it. Big shouts to Soundtown for letting me test this system. Uh, I think it's great and I would be happy to use this with my own company. But before we finish up, if you're not already, consider becoming a subscriber. It helps the channel grow. I would love you for it and I'll keep bringing you product reviews every week. If you have a question, leave it in the comments, ring the notification bell, y'all know the drill. But that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.